Hi there, this is going to be the template guide for the slide puzzle template that just came out. So right off the bat, you're going to see that the UI and the general groups are both hidden. Um, that's because you don't actually need them to customize this puzzle. You could customize everything from the slide puzzle controller in the visual scripting panel. But just so you know how everything is laid out, I am going to go over the contents of the hierarchy. So in the UI group, we have the counter, which is the score counter right here above the puzzle, the timer, which is keeping track of how long it has been since you started the puzzle, and the puzzle frame backdrop, which is this sort of frame that goes around the tiles. In the general group, we have the puzzle itself, which you can see here is actually nine separate um, planes in 3D space. So each tile is its own plane, and they are organized from the bottom left to the top right. So left to right, and then bottom to top. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's how they're labeled in here as well. And then we have this hidden object down here which says completed puzzle. And what this is, is it's a finished version of the puzzle that you can show users at the end once they've completed the puzzle. But all of these objects can be updated automatically in the slide puzzle controller. You don't actually need to touch anything in the hierarchy. So similarly, um, we will go over what is contained in the assets section, even though you don't actually need to edit any of these directly. They can all be edited from the slide puzzle controller. So in the materials folder, you'll see we have nine separate materials, one for every tile. This is because we have to tell our material um, which piece of the puzzle image to take. So we feed this the entire puzzle image, and then we tell it, okay, your coordinates are 1, 1, meaning the bottom left corner. So that is the slice that you will take. We do this for each tile. So you can see the coordinates match the position of the tile. So 2, 2 is the exact center. And then we also have a uh, material for the completed puzzle, and this just shows the full puzzle. So underneath the materials we have the meshes folder. Inside there is a single model that we use um, in order to round our tiles. So you can see in our preview here that there's a nice rounding. That is what this tile model is. It's just a, a plane with uh, rounded corners. And then finally, we have all of our textures. So primarily, these are UI textures. Um, and you, as you can see, they are grayscale. And then we have our default puzzle texture. So what we have done, actually, in our controller is given you the ability to apply a primary and secondary color to these, uh, to these UI textures that are grayscale. And then a text color as well. Speaking of which, it's finally time to talk about the actual way to customize the template. Yay! So, as I said before, in the visual scripting panel, you have this main controller, and this is where you can customize everything. Um, so the most important thing, obviously, is going to be the default puzzle texture. So right now, we're using this square image of this little dog, um, but we could change it to something like the camera input texture, for instance. So now you can see that um, this texture is unfortunately real squishy, right? It's really squished looking. Um, it's not really what we want. So in order to prevent this squishing, we have this second parameter called texture resolution. So you just need to put in here um, the resolution of your texture. In this case, it is the size of a phone screen, so 720 by 1280. Um, and if we solve this puzzle, oh, I'm not going to be able to solve it. I made it too hard. Let's try again. Maybe? Maybe? Yeah. So you can see that this is actually taking the center of our input. It's not giving you the whole image again. It's only taking the squared center portion of the provided image. So underneath that, we have 
a, a setting that you just saw me run into problems with, the difficulty setting. So right now, um, this number, what this means in the difficulty setting is the number of times it's going to shuffle one tile, uh, which can be quite hard depending on the provided image. So if you wanted to make it easier, you could make it one, which means only one tile gets shuffled. You can see it used to be here and it got moved over one. So you can solve it in one. Um, and as you go up, it gets obviously harder. I think personally that eight is a good, uh, pretty difficult puzzle. It's going to take a while, but if you want your users to be able to solve it in a minute, you might want to stay down towards the five or six range. Um, in theory, this is the minimum number of steps required to solve the puzzle. And underneath that, we have uh, just some simple game mechanics you can disable. So obviously, we provided both a timer and a counter, um, but you could use just one or the other or not use either, and that would be fine as well. I'm going to set this to really easy just, just for the purposes of this template. Uh, guide so you can see what's going on. So this parameter show complete image on win. Basically uh, this sort of effect you get when you finish the puzzle and it does that little uh, scaling of the final image and it removes all of the bevels. Uh, if you don't want that to happen you can uncheck this and then when you solve the puzzle the score will stop and the time will stop but it still stays tiled. We could also specify um, which tile we want to hide. So zero right now means it'll hide any random tile, but say you have um, a puzzle image where you want to hide a very specific part of it. Uh, like if you wanted to hide the cute little face on this dog until the very end, um, you could say this is tile five. So you could say, I want to hide tile five and then Tile 5 will be the one that is revealed at the end. Um, so you could fix which tile you want to be hidden. And then finally, we have these uh, color parameters. So the primary color is sort of what is going to tone the bevel of your image and um, the frame of your image. So let's say we want this to be a nice bright pink because it kind of goes with her hair. Nice, but then obviously this doesn't match. So the secondary color handles the frame that is behind the scoreboards. Let's make that, uh, I don't know, something horrible like that where you can't even read the numbers. Perfect. And then this, you could say, I, I just want it to be um, white. There you go. You could also replace these images back here entirely um, and do your own thing. You don't have to use our UI. Uh, it's just available if you if you want it. It's pretty simple and generic. And I think that is about it. If you wanted to try and extrapolate this into larger puzzles, more complicated puzzles, you could, in theory, go into this slide puzzle controller um, and try to decipher the madness within. Um, it's not particularly complex, but it is a lot of nodes to look at. So good, good luck. <laughs> Have fun with the template.